Welcome to Dr. B Music Theory, Ear Training Edition, number five, The Answers. Make sure you do not watch this video until you've taken the quiz. Again, do not watch this video until you've taken the quiz. All right, so here are the answers. For the triads, our first one was a major triad in first inversion. Number two was an augmented triad. We we almost always call them just root positions because they're just major thirds without a context. You can't tell if it's in an inversion. So in general, you almost always just see augmented triad as root position. Number three is a minor triad in second inversion. Number four is a diminished triad in first inversion. And as a hint, diminished triads are almost always found in first inversion. So when in doubt, guess first inversion. And finally, number five was a major triad in root position. For our seventh chords, number one was a minor minor seven, or you could just say a minor seven. There's a couple different nomenclatures on how you describe seventh chords. So minor minor seven is, is, uh, is the way I'm using, but you could also just call it a minor seventh chord. Number two is a diminished diminished seven. You could also call that just a diminished seventh chord. Number three is a major, major seven. You could call that a major seventh chord. Number four is a major minor seven. This is sometimes called a dominant seventh chord. And then finally, number five is a diminished minor seven, sometimes called a half diminished seventh chord. All right, for our melody, we start on so, we end on do. So, Take a look at the rhythm, take a look at the melody. We start. Sol, sol, do, mi, sol, 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 fa, mi, re. And here we get some arpeggiations of triads after we do this. Fa, mi, do, sol, that's our one chord. Fa, re, la, that's our two chord. Do, ti. Then we repeat. Oh, often these melodies have repetition, so don't think it's just eight measures of completely different stuff. There's often some repetition, usually at the four measure phrase. So we have a repeat. Sol, sol, do, mi, sol, 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 fa, mi, re, fa. And here we have the variation to cadence differently. Fa, mi, do, mi, re, ti, re. So there you go. You got your melody and I'm trying to give you a couple tips, things for you to think about when you're doing future dictation examples. Now, finally here for our harmonic dictation, I would I asked you to write the Roman numerals underneath for the sake of room and I only have so much space here. I'm going to write them above. So you always want to indicate the key. So capital E flat colon, uppercase for major. Our first chord is a one chord, followed by a five chord in first inversion. So we're going to call that five, six, back to the one chord, to a two chord in first inversion, five chord, one. So one, five, six, one, two, six, five, one. As promised, a very traditional common chord progression Here's where you could have gone wrong. You could have called the 5-6 a 7 diminished triad in root position, but that would be a mistake because 7 diminished, as I just said, or a diminished triad, as I said, is almost always sound, found in first inversion. So it would have been weird to have 7 diminished in root position right there. 5-6 makes a lot more sense. Here, at the 2-6 chord, you could have thought it was a 4 chord. But hopefully you're able, your ability to distinguish between a major sonority, which is what four is, and a minor sonority, which is what two is, you still have the same bass note for a four chord in root position and a two chord in first inversion, but the sonority should tell you the difference. And then hopefully you were able to get five one. All right, for the next example in D major, again, what you're going to do is you're going to indicate the key, capital D, colon, it starts on a one chord, it goes to a three chord, then to a six chord, then a two chord, then a five chord in first inversion, ending on a one chord. 
All right, so again, a very common chord progression. Where could you have gone wrong? Well, you could have thought that the second chord with the F sharp in the bass was a one chord in first inversion. Here again, knowing your sonorities for each of the diatonic triads should help you get the right answer. You can say, oh, it's an F sharp in the bass. Does that sound like a major sonority or a minor sonority? Hopefully you were able to say minor, you'd come up with a three chord. Six, here again, you could have said, uh, you know, maybe you thought it was a 4-6 chord. 4-6 would not have been insane with that bass note. Uh, but again, the difference between a major and a minor sonority. Two chord right there, that's, that's going to be pretty, pretty common. I mean, you could have thought 5-6. And then you actually have the 5-6 chord as the penultimate chord, second to last chord. Again, hopefully you didn't say 7 diminished in root position because we know diminished triads are almost always found in first inversion and we end on one. Now, some of you may be saying, Dr. B, I can tell the difference between a major and a minor triad. What I can't tell is what the bass note is. And that's, that's a very common problem. So one thing that you can do as you practice is what I call super bass. Super bass is where you repeat the bass note over and over. So for the E flat major example, and you hear that E flat going, D, back to the E flat, A flat, to the B flat, back to the E flat. So again, this is something that Normally during a quiz or sometime, some kind of exam of any kind for oral skills, they usually won't do it with what I call super bass. But for you, when you're practicing and you're just playing some chords on the piano or you're putting it into some notation software or MIDI realization software, you can, you, instead of just putting the half notes for your bass line, you could put repeated eighth notes. And that really draws your ear because you're hearing that note repeated. It makes it pop right out. And that's what you want to do until you get comfortable picking out those bass notes just with a, a block chord, go ahead and repeat that bass note to help get your ear you know, oriented on hearing those bass, bass lines. All right, hopefully you did well. If you didn't, give yourself a week to forget these answers. Go back, take the quiz again, and see if you do better. Good luck.